Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for being here today. Uh, I am joined today by uh, Council President Nick Mosby, uh, Police Commissioner Harrison, and Director Jackson from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Safety and Engagement. Before I go into our main announcement related to gun trafficking, I want to take a moment to address uh, the recent violence in our city, which has involved quite a few uh, young people, unfortunately. In recent days, we've seen a 10-year-old, 12-year-old, and 17-year-old uh, be shot here in Baltimore City. While many of the shootings that we've experienced in recent days were non-fatal, uh, the sheer amount of violence that we see is unacceptable. Uh, there is nothing harder than talking to a parent whose child has been become the victim of violence in our city. Uh, my heart goes out to the young people, their family, and our community, and all of us in Baltimore who continue to suffer from the trauma from the violence that happens. They all have my commitment to diligently uh, work to change this reality in our city for everyone. Uh, but this level of violence is extremely frustrating for me and for many in Baltimore City. We have a lot of work to do to reduce the number of illegal guns on the streets of Baltimore. We also have a lot of work to do to do when it comes to changing the culture of how we resolve conflict in Baltimore, both as a city and as a community. Because some of the stupid conflicts that are in, in, in resulting in young people and others being shot in the city absolutely can and should be resolved in a different way. And that's a culture change that we all have to work towards making in our city, starting with us here in city government. Uh, now, uh, bringing it back to today's announcement, I am proud to stand today uh, with the aforementioned individuals to announce a new addition to our comprehensive strategy to reduce gun violence in Baltimore. The Baltimore Police Department has been working alongside mayors against illegal guns and every town for gun safety to create a first of its kind data portal. This tool will give our officers a near real time view of our gun, crime gun data, uh, specifically this gun trafficking intelligence portal integrates data from BPD's E-Trace system and data from ballistic evidence with our crime data and shot spotter data. In essence, what this tool does is enable our detectives to see the full picture of guns fueling violence in Baltimore, the majority of which come from outside of our community. With a few quick clicks, our detectives can use this tool to see patterns related to where our crime guns are coming from. And it also allows us to see the connections between where guns are coming from and how they're being used on the streets of Baltimore. This tool also gives our detectives the ability to piece together the intricate webs of connections between the over 900 nibbing hits and leads that we received in 2020. Rather than officers chasing the trail or tail of one individual gun, this portal automatically displays connections uh, that detectives would have to piece together case by case previously. This is a new tool for us. Baltimore is the very first city to have a tool like this that allows us to identify patterns and networks, and we're excited to get started using it. Most of the guns, I'm going to say it again, most of the guns that are used in crimes here in Baltimore City have origins not just outside of the city, but outside of the state of Maryland. Nearly 65% of the guns seized in 2020 were purchased outside of our state originally, and at least 82%. 82 were originally purchased outside of city limits. As a city where nearly all of our crime guns originate from outside of our borders, we have an obligation to focus on the source of the firearms, not just the outcome. Without getting a handle on the supply and flow of illegal guns onto our streets, we will not be able to get a handle on the violence. Earlier this year, uh, the police department began piloting the Crime Gun Intelligence Center model in our Western Police District. This tool is a natural next step to streamline and complement that strategy into a broader gun violence investigative suite. Gun trafficking is one of our most entrenched challenges in our city, and we know that these weapons are taking lives from us, children, women, men, grandparents, fathers, uncles, mothers. So we have a duty to focus on where this flow of guns is coming from in addition to the police department's focus on those who are using them. It's not an either or, it has to be a both in order for us to see what we want to see in our city and that's a safer city. But 
it is time for us uh, to continue. Uh, our partners, and we've had a great partnership with ATF, have been working tirelessly to tackle this issue in Baltimore and every city in, across this country for decades. But it's time for us locally to have some skin in the game too. That's why I'm pleased to announce that BPD will start in a, a gun trafficking investigation initiative later this week. Uh, to make the best use of this gun trafficking intelligence platform, we plan to dedicate a sergeant and two detectives with oversight from a major uh, with investigative experience to turn these patterns, connections, and real-time data into cases with a strong foundation. This will then allow our officers to hand this information off to our relevant partners like the ATF to take them across the finish line. The specialized assignment of detectives will be specifically tasked with partnering with ATF and our other partners to carry out large-scale investigations into gun trafficking. This is about building BPD's in-house capacity to support the work of our federal partners that we know under the new administration in the federal government will only improve and expand. This initiative to hold gun traffickers and straw purchases accountable is one of my highest priorities and my office will be meeting with the commissioner and his team on a weekly basis to get an update on their progress. It is my goal uh, to find a way to transparently and responsibly share this information with the public in a way uh, that is appropriate and in alignment with the existing restrictions on the sharing of the data. Please stay tuned for more on that in the near future. In the long term, I plan to work with our federal delegation to ease these restrictions and to make this information more accessible for city officials and the public alike. I will now turn it over to Police Commissioner Harrison to talk more about our overall gun investigative approach and then to Council President Mosby. Mr. Commissioner? Good afternoon and thank you, Mr. Mayor. The Baltimore Police Department is excited to announce the implementation of this new partnership with Every Town for Gun Safety. For more than a year now, our department has been working diligently alongside Every Town to develop this data intelligence tool that will better enable us to identify patterns and pathways of guns being trafficked into our city. Additionally, this tool will assist the department in enhancing and broadening the scope of gun investigations by looking at associated persons, locations, and firearms related to gun violence. The ultimate goal of this new portal is to combat gun trafficking more effectively and to assist with reducing crime and making our city safer. As we all know, firearms are not manufactured here in the city of Baltimore. However, they do fall into the hands of young men and women who continuously commit senseless violence acts with no regard to those who may be caught in the crossfire. We know that criminals are gaining possessions of thousands of guns each year because of illegal gun trafficking, straw purchases, burglaries, and thefts that are both reported and unreported. As a result, mothers and fathers are left mourning their sons and daughters, children are left parentless, and we as a city are left with the trauma that violence breeds. This data intelligence tool will enable detectives at the ground level to identify intra and interstate gun trafficking patterns and generate leads that will identify problematic gun distributors as well as geographic and social network connections of gun crimes. This partnership with Every Town will equip our detectives with new resources and will no doubt strengthen our existing relationships with our federal, state, and local partners. And this new analytical tool is also part of a larger scale strategy focused on gun violence within our gun, Crime Gun Intelligence Center. And this center is at the forefront of improving data collection using data-driven strategies in collaboration with our law enforcement partners to reduce overall gun crimes. We will continue to work collaboratively with Evertown, Evertown and making sure that this tool is leveraged across our organizations from investigations to patrol. Internally, we have set up training sessions and are developing communication strategies to best maximize the use of this new tool in addressing gun violence. So I want to thank Mayor Scott and the leadership of Every Town for Gun Safety and our law enforcement partners for working hand in hand with our department as we continue to work together to rid Baltimore of gun violence. Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Police Commissioner, uh, for uh, providing uh, not only your leadership, uh, but your timeliness of this particular issue. 
Uh, as the mayor stated, when we see uh, the level of violence, particularly as it relates to impacting our young folks on our streets, uh, it's absolutely uh, concerning and disheartening. Uh, we understand and know, Mr. Mayor, uh, that violence, particularly handgun violence, has affected this city for as long as you have been alive. Uh, this is not a new issue, uh, and this is not an issue that will go away with business as usual tactics. I'm here to stand in support uh, in my partner in progress, the mayor, as well as the police commissioner, uh, as they go after looking at gun violence uh, from a data perspective. Data is king, uh, and you cannot solve these issues. You cannot tackle these issues. Uh, you cannot stop the destruction of our family, the stolen lives, and the, 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 um, the lack of growth in our community through gun violence uh, by emotions. It must be through data. And that's exactly what this tool is called to do. I'm excited that Mayor Brandon Scott has decided to allow Baltimore City uh, to take the first step in this initiative. I hope that uh, it pays well results where we see that this continues to spread, not just in the city of Baltimore, but throughout this country. So again, as my partner in progress, I'm excited to work with the mayor. The, the council is ready and prepared to work with the mayor, and we look forward to continue to expand uh, from this program. Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you for your partnership and your dedication to making Baltimore a safer place. And now we'll take a few questions about the initiative, if there are any. Uh, quick clarification, when will the department be able to use this? When will it launch officially? Yeah, so the department, uh, I'll let the commissioner go through the process of how uh, and when they're going to do it, but this is something that is imminent, right? We can, we, the portal is ready. He has to make sure that he gets everything in, in shape on his end. I'll let the commissioner talk about that. Mr. Commissioner? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So the, while the portal is ready, we, there is a uh, selection process that has to be underway on how we select the detectives for this initiative. That will be underway in just a matter of days. And okay. it, it takes a, a, a week or so to figure out who applies and then to vet them because it's a competitive, open, competitive process. So the detectives will have to apply, then there'll be a selection process. That is correct. And then, so like a month? Less than that. Much, Less much, than a month? Yes. Okay. I know you said that you're, you're a data-driven person. I heard the mayor say this is the first, uh, the city is the first. Why do you, or how do you feel this will be successful compared to other initiatives? Well, we're a data-driven administration, and what we want to do is make sure we build in-house capacity to be able to liaison with, the, with our federal partners, but liaison with other city and county law enforcement agencies to understand where guns are coming from and how they are connected to the crimes committed in our city. Thank you. And just to add to that before we go to Avajoy, I think it's important, Alexa, for folks to hear this. Uh, when I talk, and you heard me talk about this for a long time now, about the need to focus this, when I talk to residents in the city of Baltimore, they want us to hold people that are committing violence responsible, but overwhelmingly they also say, when are you guys going to do something about the folks who are bringing the guns into this city? And we continuously have been ignoring that. This is why we're the first. We're going to focus on these people too, because they're just as responsible for what's happening. If you are selling a weapon illegally or trafficking a weapon illegally or even straw purchasing a weapon, knowing that the person you're giving it to is going to shoot, rob, or kill somebody, you have to be held responsible. And this is why we're jumping out first on this. Avajoy? Last question I have is, can you tell me a little bit about your conversation from your release yesterday about the youth violence? You started out with that. You said you were meeting with the heads of the Baltimore Police Department. We're not going to discuss uh, uh, deployment strategy, but just know uh, that we had a meeting about the importance of us making sure that we're using data to adapt and to make sure that we're doing things that are going to quell uh, the violence from a policing standpoint that we've had in recent months, in Thank recent, you. recent weeks. Thank you. Avajoy? Thank you. So the state's attorney's office, I'm curious as to where they stand with this process, because if we, if you guys are having a partnership with federal agencies, how are you going to bring these cases across the line to ensure that the people who are committing the crimes aren't recommitting them? Yeah, we will work. Uh, listen, our police department and the state's attorney's office work together already around cases. This will fall in line with how we already work with them in our investigative cases. We have a good relationship. We're going to continue to improve that to make sure. But it's not just about our local state's attorney because you're talking about ATF. So we know that's going to involve our federal attorney and federal partnership as well. This is an initiative that is 
is going to be welcomed by everyone because we all know this is an issue that we have to attack. Um, and maybe this is a question for you, uh, Mr. Mayor or Mr. Commissioner. Three children have been shot in the last few days. Do you guys have any updates on these suspects? Are there any suspects in these cases? Well, I'll let the commissioner, t commissioner answer that direct question, but I will tell you this. Uh, what I've said to the commissioner and his team, finding those individuals are a top priority for me because people who cowardly shoot children uh, should not be able to walk freely around the city and think they're going to go about their everyday lives knowing that they're not man or woman enough to step up and say, okay, I shot a kid, I did it. We're going to make sure that we're going after these people aggressively and holding them accountable for shooting our babies. So we have leads, detectives are following up on leads. We're not quite ready to say we have uh, suspects or persons of interest, but we have leads that we're developing and working on. What we know is that in all three cases, there were three distinct incidents. Two, two kids on the playground, you have a young girl caught in a crossfire between two rival groups, and then three young men targeted this young man uh, just the other day. So there are three distinct types of shooting uh, doesn't make it any less. We're following up on leads. What we know is that in all three, there were many, many people who were out there that could provide information to help us identify who's responsible for it. That's why it's so important for us to ask the community for help in every last one of them, and we do that again right now. Anyone with any information, because we know people were out in all three of these, that saw or heard anything or know something in any way to please call us, or you can do it anonymously by calling Crime Stoppers. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, this is a question for either yourself or the council president if he'd like to comment as well. Um, after last week, you had launched the Youth Initiative, which had education as a, as a big part of that. Um, I, I mean, yesterday. Is this question about this, this in, in issue of violence? I'm hoping to get your reaction to education in our Project Baltimore investigation that found a number of students over at uh, Dan, Augusta we Fells. specifically said that we were talking about this issue of violence. We're talking about young people being shot. I just want to remind Mr. you Mr. Mayor, that. I, and I understand remind that. And you, I, hold on. I, I'm talking. Just wait a second. And reminds you of that, that we make that be clear before we start it. Just to let you know, continue with your question. This is our opportunity to ask you questions, Mr. Mayor, so that's why I'm asking you the question. I understand it's off topic, and I apologize for that, but we're hoping to just get your reaction to the Project Baltimore investigation that found a few hundred students at Augusta Fells that were being passed through the grades, uh, even though they were failing on their report cards and such, looking to see if you think there needs to be some action taken here. Listen, we know that we have to improve our school system, Dan. I think we all know that, but we all have to also understand that what we have to stop doing is using our young people people and families and young people that need help as pawns for media clicks. And we have to understand what those families are going through. For you, uh, that might just be a story, but for those young people and those families, they don't want, a lot of those kids don't want their information being put out there. What we're going to do, and this is why it's important for us to, again, understand and help everyone understand that we have a school system that has been underfunded by $300 million a year by our state. And they just now, after our wonderful General Assembly overrode the governor's short-sighted veto of fully funded funding schools in one of the wealthiest states in the wealthiest country in the history of the world that will be able to improve our system working with our partners again because the city does not control the schools to make sure that we're meeting the needs of our students in a 21st century fashion thank you and thank you everybody for coming